Mexican president ruled out breaking ties with Ecuador following the expulsion of the country's ambassador to Quito due to his recent statements. Former Trump officials warned about his potential third presidency and called him a threat to democracy. President Joe Biden promised to rebuild the Baltimore Bridge. He stated that he's going to move heaven and earth to rebuild Baltimore Bridge. The Peruvian president was interrogated by prosecutors for five hours as authorities investigate whether she illegally received hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, luxury watches and jewellery. Hello and welcome. You're watching The World this morning with me, Guinea Narula. Now, Slovakians are gearing up for a crucial presidential runoff as the nation decides between a pro-Western diplomat and a close ally of Prime Minister Robert Fico. More details in this report. As Slovakia braces for a historic presidential runoff, the nation is divided between two contenders vying for the largely ceremonial post. Former Foreign Minister Ivan Korkok, a pro-Western diplomat, faces off against Peter Pellegrini, a close ally of Prime Minister Robert Fico. Well, if Korkok wins, I believe it will be good for the country, you know, the balance. We need some um, person in the, as a president that counterweights the government, which is let's say not full democratic and uh, has some autocratic uh, um, tendencies and Pellegrini he's a he's a Fitzox guy so he will do anything what will Fitz ask him to do and uh, that will be bad in general for the country the, for the democracy and for the future. The election has sparked intense debate among Slovakians with concerns ranging from democratic balance to Slovakia's stance on the war in neighboring Ukraine. I believe it could definitely happen that Slovakia will become another Hungary very soon because there will be, uh, I think the president could be like the last uh, break because if Peter Pellegrini will become president I think uh, he will like confirm anything that will this uh, government wants. So. The role of the president in Slovakia is largely ceremonial, but holds significant symbolic and political weight with responsibilities including appointing the prime minister and vetoing laws. Meanwhile, in neighboring Czechia, Slovakians living abroad are making the journey back home to cast their votes, underscoring the significance of this election. Hlavně my, mladí ľudia, odišli domov, aby sme volili, lebo my teraz počujeme často, že mladí ľudia nechodia voliť tak, čak, tak často domov. Tak ja som rozhodol proste odísť domov, aby som, aby som reprezentoval uh, môj názor uh, pri voľbách, takže, takže asi... asi. Organized initiatives like Bratislava Election Train are facilitating the return of voters, highlighting the engagement and enthusiasm surrounding this crucial democratic process. Agency Report, Republic TV. Now in Karachi, hundreds of predominantly women took to the streets rallying for Al Qaeda's day, carrying banners denouncing Israel and the US. They voiced demands for Palestinian freedom, chanting down with Israel slogans. According to Gaza's health ministry, over 33,000 Palestinians have died with 75,600 wounded in the ongoing conflict. More in this report. Take a look. Hundreds of people, mostly women, marched in Karachi to mark Al Quds Day. Carrying banners and placards inscribed with slogans against Israel and the US, they demanded the freedom of Palestinians and repeatedly chanted down with Israel. The Palestinian death toll has passed 33,000 with another 75,600 people wounded. जो कि इंसानियत का दुश्मन है उसके वजूद को इस जमीन से मिटा देना चाहिए 
उसके वजूद को ख़त्म करना चाहिए ये इसराइल जब पिछहत्तर साल पहले बना था उस वक्त नाजायज़ था गासिब था इसने कब्जा किया था और आज ये कातिल है इसने कत्ल किया है और अगर इनको छोड़ा गया तो ये दुनिया में हर इंसान को कत्ल करेंगे The ministry doesn't differentiate between civilians and combatants in its tally but says women and children make up to two thirds of the dead. The war began on October 7 when Hamas led terrorist stormed into southern Israel killing some 1200 people mostly civilians and taking around 250 people hostage. Agency report Republic TV. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza takes center stage as US Secretary of State Antony Blinken addresses the efforts to improve aid distribution in the war-torn territory. Let's delve into the details of his remarks. In a news conference held in Belgium, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken commended Israel's recent steps to enhance aid distribution into Gaza. We uh, we welcome the steps that uh, have been announced uh, by Israel, uh, opening uh, Erez as a new crossing point, uh, having um, shipments go directly from the Ashdod port, uh, maximizing the route from Jordan. Uh, these are positive developments, but the real test is results, and that's what we're looking to see in the coming days and in the coming weeks. Um, is the aid uh, effectively reaching people who need it uh, throughout Gaza? uh are the bottlenecks and other delays at uh, crossings being resolved do we have a much better system for deconfliction and coordination so that the humanitarian workers the folks who are delivering the aid can do it safely uh, and securely while acknowledging the potential impact on the newly opened border crossings blinken underscored the importance of a robust system for deconfliction and coordination to ensure the safe and efficient delivery of aid to Palestinians in Gaza. Uh all of these things are critical and that needs to again really be measured uh by the results. Uh and some of the the measures that uh, uh we're looking to include things like uh the number of trucks that are actually getting in on a sustained basis uh and get not just getting in but then getting around uh the aid being distributed throughout Gaza including critically uh northern Gaza some of the measurements that we've been deeply concerned by uh including uh the fact that um, almost 100% of the population is acutely food insecure that their indicators of potential famine uh we'll be looking closely at those to see that uh that they're reversed Blinken stressed on the need for an independent and thorough investigation into the Israeli strikes that resulted in the deaths of seven aid workers calling for transparency and accountability in the process. It's also critical that we see um an independent thorough and fully publicized investigation into the killing of the World Central Kitchen. Um team uh who were performing heroic work under the most difficult circumstances in trying to get assistance to people who so desperately need it. Uh so we're looking to see that investigation, we're looking to see a public accounting and we're looking to see accountability uh in in its wake. Uh and this goes to a larger challenge that um we've seen throughout which is uh the horrific uh number of children, women men innocent children women and men who've been killed through the course of the military operations we've talked about this many times the unique challenge of dealing with an enemy that embeds itself with the civilian population that hides behind them uh underneath them in tunnels in mosques and schools apartment buildings but israel's obligation its responsibility to maximize protection for civilians uh to make that a priority uh that too is a critical test so what we're looking to see in the in the days and weeks ahead is prioritization the secretary of state reiterated on uss commitment to prioritizing the safety of civilians caught in the crossfire surging humanitarian assistance sustaining it getting it to people who need it 
making sure that those who are providing it are safe and secure, and maximizing every effort to protect civilians, those who are caught in, caught in this crossfire Hamas is making. Uh, we just can't have uh, so many people uh, caught in that crossfire, uh, killed, injured, going forward. International pressure mounts for tangible improvements in Gaza's humanitarian situation. Agency report, Republic TV. Now in news and wrap from across the globe, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned of the risk of jobs and businesses posed by overproduction of certain goods in China. She said that during her China visit, she would address the oversupply of Chinese goods in key industries such as electric vehicles and solar panels. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Rome to rally against a law drafted by the right-wing government of Georgia Meloni to make surrogacy a crime. The draft bill would make it illegal in Italy for citizens to engage a surrogate mother in another country and authorize prison terms of up to three years. Tens of thousands of Yemenis demonstrated in Sana to show their solidarity to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. The protesters voiced anti-American and anti-Israeli sentiments through their chants. The demonstration was held in observance of Jerusalem Day, also known as Al-Qads Day. Russian barrage hit the Ukrainian power plant followed with deafening explosions and plumes of smoke filling the sky. Fires blazed and shrapnel pierced the roof of the huge complex, causing debris to rain down on workers. Family, friends and comrades paid their respects to the Ukrainian soldier Vadim during a farewell ceremony at Central Independence Square in Kyiv. Vedim, born in 1991, was killed in action on Advika direction, Donetsk region, one of the most intense parts of 1,000 kilometers long front line. Moscow dismissed accusations of Russian interference in Europe on Friday after French President Emmanuel Macron said Russia has sought to undermine the upcoming Olympics in Paris. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned of the risk to jobs and businesses posed by overproduction of certain goods in China. She said that during her China visit, she would address the oversupply of the Chinese goods in key industries such as electric vehicles and solar panels. Details in this report. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has called on China to address manufacturing overcapacity. During her five-day visit to China, she said she would raise the issue of industrial overcapacity and unfair Chinese trade practices. We've seen the PRC pursue unfair economic practices, including imposing barriers to access for foreign firms and taking coercive actions against American companies. I strongly believe that this doesn't only hurt these American firms, Ending these unfair practices would benefit China by improving the business climate here. And I intend to raise these issues in meetings this week. Yellen said that it is important for the US and China to have open and direct communication on areas of this agreement. And I guess I'd like to underscore that our concern with overcapacity, this is not anti-China policy. It's an effort for us to mitigate the risks from the inevitable global economic dislocation that will result if China doesn't adjust its policies. And it is in the spirit of moving the U.S.-China economic relationship toward in a kind of constructive direction. She also said that China could benefit from a shift in policy. As an economist, I really think that a shift in policy would actually be beneficial for China. It would avoid the resource misallocation that occurs when government subsidies are channeled to firms that wouldn't otherwise be viable. And that's something that would improve China's productivity. 
And I suppose more broadly, I believe that a structural macroeconomic shift that lifts domestic household consumption would be something that's in China's interest, and it would be something that's good for the global economy. The massive scale of production has driven down costs and ignited price wars for green technologies. This is a boon for consumers and efforts to reduce global dependence on fossil fuels. Agency Report, Republic TV. Now, news in wrap from across the globe. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned of the risk to jobs and businesses posed by overproduction of certain goods in China. She said that during her China visit, she would address the oversupply of Chinese goods in key industries such as electric vehicles and solar panels. The UN's top human rights body is considering a measure to call for an export ban of weapons to Israel as part of a string of resolutions on the last day of its spring season. The draft resolution calls on countries to seize the sale, transfer and diversion of arms, munitions and other military equipment to Israel. Europol has identified 821 criminal networks which have more than 25,000 members in the bloc. These networks are penetrating legal businesses across the 27-nation bloc and rely heavily on corruption to develop their activities. According to the agency, 86% of these criminal networks are able to infiltrate the legal economy to hide their activities and launder their criminal profits. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the measures in the Israeli government has announced to expand the flow of aid into Gaza are welcome. But these measures may not be enough to meet the Biden administration's demands for dramatic improvements in humanitarian conditions in the territory. He further said that the opening of more border crossings could surge aid to Palestinians caught in the fighting between Israel and Hamas. In the wake of last Friday prayers of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan today, Israeli police has tightened security in Jerusalem. This comes after eight Palestinian worshippers were detained for allegedly chanting inflammatory slogans at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa compound. The incident marks the first flare-up between Israeli forces and worshippers at the compound during this Ramadan as the Hamas-Israel war rages on in Gaza. Tens of thousands of Yemenis demonstrated in Sana'a to show their solidarity to the Palestinians the Gaza Strip. The protesters voiced anti-American and anti-Israeli sentiments through their chants. The demonstration was held in observance of Jerusalem Day, also known as Al-Qad's Day. Hundreds of people, mostly women, marched in Karachi, marked al Qaeda's Day, they carried banners and placards inscribed with slogans against Israel and the U.S. They demanded the freedom of Palestinians and repeatedly chanted, down with Israel. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Rome to rally against a law drafted by the right-wing government of Georgia Maloney to make surrogacy a crime. The draft bill would make it illegal in Italy for citizens to engage a surrogate mother in another country and authorize prison terms for up to three years. In a recent drone and missile attack, Russia attacked Ukraine's energy sector with renewed intensity and alarming accuracy, signaling to Ukrainian officials that Russia is armed with better intelligence and fresh tactics in its campaign to annihilate the country's power generation capacity. According to official data, at least two thermal power plants were damaged in the attack. Dozens of lights at Sydney Airport were cancelled while train services faced delays after heavy rainfall lashed parts of Australia's southeast region. This has triggered flood warnings and residents have been asked to avoid unnecessary driving trips. A severe weather warning has been issued and residents have been advised to remain alert over the next few days. Now time to slip in a very short break. Coming up on the other side, Workers' Union of Argentina State Employees staged protest after the government's announcement of cutting 15,000 state jobs. Mexican president ruled out breaking ties with Ecuador following the expulsion of the country's ambassador to Quito due to his recent statements.
इंडी एलायंस वाले लोग बार बार जानबूझकर हिंदू धर्म का अपमान करते हैं इनका हर बयान बहुत सोचा समझा हुआ होता है Many Indians today live outside India. They travel outside India. They study outside India. You see, last few years we've had some big challenges. There was a war in Ukraine. Uh, there is fighting still going on in Israel and Gaza. There was civil war in Sudan. We have had many, many times to do rescue operations. One of the big achievements of the Modi government is we tell every Indian, please feel safe going outside because when you leave India, we are there for you. Many Indians today live outside India, they travel outside India, they study outside India. This number today is almost 2 crore and they are in every country of the world. And you also know something or the other will always happen. Not every part of the world is always peaceful and happy. And again, if you see last few years, we've had some big challenges. There was a war in Ukraine. Uh, there is fighting still going on in Israel and Gaza. There was civil war in Sudan. So we have had many, many times to do rescue operations. One of the big achievements of the Modi government is we tell every Indian, please. Welcome back, viewers. Now, Deepika Padukone, who is expecting her first child with husband Ranveer Singh and is busy with the shoot of Kalki 2898 AD and Singham 3, is reported to miss the Met Gala 2024. The biggest fashion event of the year will roll out the red carpets on May 6, 2024. Deepika, who has attended the gala three times in the past, will give this year's extravaganza a miss. Deepika Padukone, who is currently in her second trimester of pregnancy, will give this year's Met Gala a miss due to prior work commitments. The actress is also busy with the shoot for Kalki 289880 and Singham 3, which is slated for May. For three consecutive years, Deepika Padukone has graced the prestigious Met Gala red carpet. She has captivated audiences with her impeccable style and sartorial choices. Being a global ambassador for India, her presence at global events is what keeps her fans excited. In 2017, Deepika made her Met Gala debut in a sleek slip gown by Tommy Hilfiger, marking the beginning of her journey. The global icon is currently expecting, but there is nothing stopping her, as she is busy fulfilling her work commitments. Agency Report, Republic TV. Amid their ongoing divorce case, Angelina Jolie has presented fresh documents revealing Brad Pitt physically abused her before the 2016 plane incident. Now, this new development comes amid the former couple's ongoing legal divorce battle over shared ownership of French winery. Angelina Jolie's legal team has filed new court documents accusing her former husband, Brad Pitt, of a disturbing pattern of abuse. The documents assert that Pitt's physical abuse towards her began well before the 2016 plane incident that prompted her to initiate divorce proceedings. 
This recent development arises amidst the ongoing legal divorce battle between the former couple concerning the shared ownership of a French winery. The new legal filing claims that Jolie attempted to sell her stake in the couple's French winery, Miraval. However, negotiations broke down after Pitt insisted on a non-disclosure agreement that would have prohibited Jolie from speaking about Pitt's alleged abuse. The latest development stems from Pitt's 2022 lawsuit in which he claimed that he and Jolie had an agreement that neither would sell their stake in the winery without the other's consent. Agency Report, Republic TV Time to slip in a very short break. Coming up on the other side, Delhi court to hear liquor gate accused Manish Sisodia's bail plea today. All eyes on the hearing. Amity has been ranked amongst the top 3% universities globally. A testimony to Amity's globally benchmarked quality. You are watching the Morning Express at 8. I'm Zoesha Savant. We get to all the top stories making news. First, a quick check of the headlines we're tracking at the side. Delhi court to hear Lika Gate accused Manish Sisodia's bail plea today. All eyes on the hearing. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar slams anti CAA lobby, says CAA does not exclude. India doesn't need sermons from other countries. 
CPI worker killed, another injured in blast during bomb making in Kerala's Kannur district. Blame game ensues. Big setback for BRS ahead of Lok Sabha polls. Four BRS MAs likely to join the Congress today. Shiv Sena Udhav Thakre faction announces candidate for Sangli after high level deliberations. And well, we are just weeks away from the Lok Sabha elections and today the Congress party released its uh, manifesto. In fact, it was yesterday, which is a copy-paste version of the 2019 poll promises. Now, this manifesto has more anomalies than promises. Take a look at this report. The Congress has released its 48-page poll manifesto. A slew of promises, some repackaged, some that shock and some which mismatch. The Congress in its manifesto, mostly a rehashed one from 2019, has made regressive promises it calls progressive. From carrying out a pan-India caste census to bringing back personal laws, let us tell you what doesn't add up. The Congress has released its 48-page manifesto which it calls uh, the Nyai Patra and in, in the Nyai Patra it has guaranteed uh, a lot of schemes. You will find that the Congress has set a minimum wage of 400 rupees per day for a daily wage worker which translates to about 1,44,000 rupees a year. So this is an anomaly because who would apply for an apprenticeship if a daily wage worker is getting paid more than him? Now the judiciary. The Congress promises more women, OBCs and minorities to the High Courts and Supreme Court. The question is, why bring quota over merit system even in judiciary? Let's talk about federalism. Rahul's manifesto says, with consensus, transfer of fields from list 3 to list 2. Is this an attempt to weaken the powers of the central government? The list goes on and has invited a political blowback. दूसरी पार्टियों की तरह भाजपा केवल घोषणा पत्र नहीं जारी करती हम तो संकल्प पत्र लेकर के आते 2019 में हमने जो संकल्प पत्र जारी किया था उसके ज्यादातर संकल्प पूरे हो चुके मोदी ने आपको जो वादा किया था वो वादा पूर्णा करने के लिए एडी चोटी का जोर लगा दिया है जो कांग्रेस की फितरत रही है आदत रही है शरारत रही है उसी के अनुरूप उन्होंने एक बार फिर भ्रम पैदा करने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का मैनिफेस्टो दिया है जिसमें से एक भी चीज ना उन्होंने केंद्र में रहते हुए कभी पूरी की ना राज्य सरकारों में रहते हुए पूरी की इज दिस अ मैनिफेस्टो दैट इंडिया विल एक्सेप्ट Meanwhile, at least one terrorist was killed as troops foiled an infiltration attempt along the line of control in Uri area of North Kashmir. This was said by the army as the operation is still ongoing. Further details are awaited. Meanwhile, we take a look at what happened during this incident. The Indian forces and JNK police once again have successfully thwarted an infiltration bit along the LOC. Attempt to enter Indian territory was thwarted along the Uri border in Baramulla district. The Indian Army confirmed one terrorist was neutralized in the operation. We are seeing the massive combing operation taking place in uh, this Rustam near this Rustam post, which is again a Subhorpora, Nala, where this infiltration bit has taken place in the VRs. The Lord troops observed the moment. Uh, they were asked that to identify themselves, but the terrorists opened the fire and then Indian army retaliated as per the sources that there were the number of terrorists that had tried to sneak in the Indian, Indian territory, but they were retaliated and they were pushed back. As of now, the one body has been recovered, but they there are then confirmed reports that suggest that one more terrorist has been neutralized, although the body remains to be unclaimed by the forces. But 
While the operation is still ongoing, the forces have made massive recoveries which include two AK-47 rifle, hand grenade and Pakistan currency among others. As Pakistan continues with its nefarious designs, our forces have once again sent out a clear message that India will do everything in its might to thwart Pakistan's attempt to rain terror on Indian soil. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Meanwhile, Kerala Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan objected to the telecast of the film Kerala Story by Doordarshan, strongly criticizing this move. Chief Minister said a public sector organization like Doordarshan should not become a puppet of the Sangh Parivar. Following in the footsteps of Kerala Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan, leader of opposition in Kerala, also objected to the screening of the film. The leader of opposition has written a letter to the election commission requesting the withdrawal of permission for the film screening. Here's the report. May 5, 2023. A film depicting terrorism and the reality of ISIS was met with widespread protest. Slogans raised, sit in protest staged, screenings blocked. As you know very well, that there were so many cases to stop the film everywhere. Uh, Supreme Court has thrown this petition out three times. Uh, Chennai High Court has thrown the petition out today. But tomorrow, there are six petitions in Kerala High Court trying to stop the film from getting released. After a battle with the censor board, the Kerala story was finally told. Eleven months later, the Kerala story is once again caught in the eye of the storm. The left is seeing red about the movie being broadcast on Doordarshan. They have even resorted to calling Doordarshan a propaganda machine of BJP and RSS now. Joining the chorus is Ally Congress. And that too on a day when Congress is ranting and raving about not clamping down on censorship and being the beacon for freedom of expression. हमारे घोषणा पत्र में संविधानिक न्याय कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जस्टिस खंड में लोकतंत्र बचाओ भय से मुक्ति से लेकर मीडिया न्यायपालिका आजादी भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ मुहिम जैसे मुद्दे कला संस्कृति जैसे विषय भी है इवन द केरला हाई कोर्ट हैज सेट द रिकॉर्ड स्ट्रेट then why is the No Censorship Brigade seeking a pullback now? Padra Congress releases rehashed manifesto, promises quota system in appointment in the judiciary. Nizamabad BJP MP Arvind Dharmapuri ridicules Congress manifesto, says the nation is laughing at the sight of Nyay Patra, further adds that Modi's guarantees are stronger. Rajasthan BJP leader scoffs at Congress's manifesto, says it is the habit of Congress leaders to speak irresponsibly and adds that raking up issue of reservation will not succeed. TMK Chief and Tamil Nadu Chief Minister MK Stalin says BJP is totally against reservation adds that the Saffron Party would bury social justice. CPI General Secretary D. Raja calls 2024 polls a close contest, calls Prime Minister Modi's Char Supar as a hyperbolic claim, adds that his party members believe there will be a change in government. OBC community from Shah Jahanpur writes a letter to Akhilesh Yadav demanding a person from Lodi community to get tickets in Kannauj. Congress releases a list of 40 star campaigners for Uttarakhand for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Leaders including Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi among the campaigners. 
Prime Minister Modi will visit Assam on the 17th of April and address a rally in Nalbari ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will also visit Assam over two days on April 7th, 8th, during which he is scheduled to address three rallies. Prime Minister Modi to hold a public rally in Saharanpur. He will address a mega rally today at 11.30 in the morning. After Supreme Court stays order on UP Madrasa Act, Uttar Pradesh Minister Danish Azad Ansari says a committee will be formed to run the Madrasa education system smoothly. While External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar dismissed a senior UN official's recent remark on elections in India, saying that he does not need the global body to tell the elections in the country should be free and fair. Getting you all the details of that statement. Days after United Nations' attempt to meddle in India's affairs, Jay Shankar has rebuffed UN officials' free and fair polls pitch. Setting the record straight, Jay Shankar said India does not need lessons from the UN. The United Nations spokesman said something to the effect, you know, in India, like in any other country, we are confident, we hope the democratic process would be free and fair, etc. But in India, I don't need the United Nations to tell me our election should be free and fair, no. I have the people of India. The people of India will ensure the elections are free and fair, so don't worry. Wading into India's matters, UN official had said last week that people must be able to vote freely and fairly. That in India and that in any country that is having uh, elections, that everyone's rights are uh, protected, including political and civil rights, and everyone is able to vote in an atmosphere um, that is free and fair. BJP also questioned the double standards of the UN, questioning the global body's silence on Myanmar crisis and the Yemen civil war. India, 900 million voters go to vote. One million polling booths. India is the only nation which since independence has not seen any violent transition of power. I think the uh, United Nations uh, spokesperson should remove their blinders uh, leave their drawing room and should be abreast with the reality. And as Mr. Jay Shankar said, India's fully Indian voter, the 900 million voter, is fully capable to do uh, elections in a free and a fair manner. The external affairs minister has made India's stand clear that an attempt to malign India's image will not be tolerated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. And well, the Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kanta Das announced the first monetary policy of the financial year 2024-25. RBI's Monetary Policy Committee, headed by Governor Shakti Kanta Das, decided to maintain status quo on policy rates for the seventh straight time. Here's a report. The Reserve Bank of India kept its key lending rate unchanged at 6.5% for the seventh consecutive time. The decision was taken by a 5 to 1 majority at the bi-monthly Monetary Policy Committee meeting. An unchanged repo rate means the loan interest rates too are likely to remain unchanged. The RBI had paused the rate increase cycle last April after six straight rate hikes of 250 basis points since May 2022. The Reserve Bank MPC decided by a majority of 5 to 1 to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. Consequently, the standing deposit facility that is the SDF rate remains at 6.25% and the marginal standing facility that is the MSF rate remains at 6. MSF rate and the bank rate they remain at 6.75%. Inflation is moving closer to target, said the RBI governor, projecting retail inflation for the current year at 4.5%. The RBI has been mandated by the government to maintain retail inflation at 4% with a 2% margin on either side. He said that core inflation has declined steadily over the last nine months while fuel component remain in deflation for six straight months. 
and robust growth prospects provide space for the policy to remain focused on inflation. The Reserve Bank, the market participants, the market players and perhaps the media and analysts and all, every stakeholder, I think the thinking is at the moment well aligned so far as the monetary policy is concerned. That is robust, resilient and future ready. The Reserve Bank of India's foreign exchange reserves touched a new record high of $645.58 billion in the week ending March 29, topping the previous high of $642.49. External financing requirements comfortably. Now talking about the Forex reserves, I recall that uh, in 2021 our Forex reserves had also reached 642 plus uh, billion US dollars. Then uh, following the commencement of the war in Ukraine and the outflow of uh, uh, dollar from India as well as from several other countries on uh, safe haven demand, uh, there were concerns that forex reserves of India was going down and at one point it had gone down, our forex reserves had gone down to about 524 uh, billion dollars. India continues to remain the largest receiver of remittances with the country's foreign portfolio investment seeing a significant turnaround, the RBI governor said. Bureau reports Republic TV. And well, India's Adani Wilmar opens new tab forecast double digit percentage growth in fourth quarter edible oil sales on Friday, driven by strong demand during the festive season in the world's biggest importer. Getting you details on this report. Adani Wilmar said that the company has witnessed double digit growth in both edible oils and foods businesses during the quarter that ended on March 31st, 2024. This, it added, was driven by increased retail penetration, particularly focusing on under-indexed markets. In a regulatory filing, Atani Wilma said that the company benefited from the strong demand during the festive occasion of Holi and the ongoing wedding season. However, Adani Wilmer reported a decline in its export business of animal feed, which dragged down the overall volume growth to 4% year-on-year in quarter 4 of financial year 2024. Adani Wilmer said that during financial year 24, the company saw its branded edible oils registering a 15% growth compared to the overall segment growth of 10% year-on-year. This, it said, is the second consecutive year with faster growth in the branded portfolio. It must be noted that financial year 24 had lower edible oils prices compared to the previous year, leading to lower revenue despite the growing volumes. In recent quarters, the FMCG major has made significant improvement to its distribution infrastructure in the southern region with regional marketing communications and other interventions resulting in gaining market share in the sunflower oil segment. Bureau reports Republic TV. And while the future of electric cars in India seems to be bright as the Indian government has allocated 1 lakh crore rupees for investments in R&D and EV infrastructure, experts believe that the government's support for EV industry will help India achieve a net zero target by 2070. Here's a report. Electric vehicle sales in India are expected to rise 66% this year after nearly doubling in 2023 as state subsidies help fuel demand and supporting infrastructure comes up in the country. The rapid growth in sales comes at a time when EV growth in other key markets such as the United States and China are slowing. The report forecast that by 2030 EVs are expected to represent nearly a third of India's personal vehicle market. India's EV market, small but growing, is dominated by domestic car maker Tata Motors. Electric models made up of 2% of total car sales in 2023, but the government is targeting 30% by 2030. The Indian government last month lowered EV import taxes on certain models if car makers commit to invest at least 
500 million dollar and start domestic manufacturing within 3 years a move seen as a win for foreign automakers including tesla tata motors held more than 2/3 of the country's ev market last year but lost ground to mahindra and mahindra and chinese automaker byd indian government has implemented multiple subsidy and incentive schemes to promote electric cars in india the indian automotive landscape in india is witnessing a shift bureau report republic tv And well, after US, it seems like UK is getting together back at India. A report published by the Guardian has claimed that India, through its research and analysis wing, carried out 20 killings of terrorists in Pakistan since 2020. The targeted assassinations came after the Pulwama attack of 2019. India, however, has refuted these claims, calling it false and malicious anti-India propaganda. Here's the report. The Western media propaganda on India is back in focus once again. And this time it's The Guardian. It's alleged a report claiming that Indian government ordered killings on Pakistani soil. The basis they claim to have interviews with Pakistani investigators and documents they claim shared by the Pakistanis. A hit job at best. India has responded to the report as it should have. calling out the false and malicious propaganda but this is not the first time an anti india narrative is being peddled from trudeau's big nijar killing allegation that triggered a massive india canada diplomatic row but was not met with any substance it's extremely important that as a country with a strong and independent justice system we allow those justice processes to unfold themselves with the utmost integrity but i can assure you the decision to uh, share these allegations on the floor of the house of commons monday morning was not done lightly uh, it was done with or monday afternoon was done with uh, the utmost seriousness to the plot to kill pannu claim a charge that still awaits proof man i don't really have any uh, anything new to sort of offer on this that uh, both Matt and the secretary haven't spoke to um already I would say in in the number of of times that has come up uh before the press in in the past week or so I would just reiterate again we are and continue to be deeply uh concerned about the uh allegations referenced by Prime Minister Trudeau and we remain in regular contact with our Canadian partners and it's critical that Canada's investigation proceed and uh the perpetrators be brought to justice we also have um as we previously said uh publicly and privately urged the Indian government to cooperate uh in the Canadian investigation and uh, uh cooperate uh, in those efforts India has made it stand clear one we told the Canadians that uh, this is not the government of India's policy two we told the Canadians saying that look if you have something specific if you have something relevant you know let us know we are open to looking at uh, do understand that there is an environment out there so that is important in a way to uh, to factor in then why is the british media banking on pakistan isi's tail on india for a short commercial break on the other side we get you the latest uh, from the world of sports and entertainment sunrisers hyderabad faced a stern test as they took on reigning champions chennai super kings in match 80 Actor Ranveer Singh is all set to make his acting debut in The South reports suggest he will feature in Rajni Khan's The Liver 171 कांग्रेस टू साइड ऑफ द सेम क्वाइन है नरेंद्र मोदी भाइयों और बहनों सिर्फ मुखौटा है छप्पन इंच की छाती नहीं है जो भ्रष्टाचार करेगा वो जेल की सलाखों के पीछे चला जाएगा हिंदू धर्म में शक्ति शब्द होता है 
हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं इन सबके स्वरूपा माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दो May 5, 2023. A film depicting terrorism and the reality of ISIS was met with widespread protest. Slogans raised, sit-in protests staged, screenings blocked. As you know very well that there were so many cases to stop the film everywhere. Uh, Supreme Court has thrown this petition out three times. Uh, Chennai High Court has thrown the petition out today. but tomorrow there are six petitions in kerala high court trying to stop the film from getting released after a battle with the censor board the kerala story was finally told 11 months later the kerala story is once again caught in the eye of the storm the left is seeing red about the movie being broadcast on doordarshan they have even resorted to calling doordarshan a propaganda machine of bjp and rss now joining the chorus is ally congress and that too on a day when congress is ranting and raving about not clamping down on censorship and being the beacon for freedom of expression hamare ghoshna patra mein संविधानिक न्याय कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जस्टिस खंड में लोकतंत्र बचाओ भय से मुक्ति से लेकर मीडिया न्यायपालिका आजादी भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ मुहिम जैसे मुद्दे कला संस्कृति जैसे विषय भी है इवन द केरला हाई कोर्ट हैज सेट द रिकॉर्ड स्ट्रेट देन व्हाई इज द नो सेंसरशिप ब्रिगेड सीकिंग अ पुल बैक नाउ शब्द होता है हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं एक शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं इंडिया अलायंस ने अपना घोषणा पत्र शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और What's making news from across the globe? Workers Union of Argentina state employees staged a protest after the government's announcement of cutting 15,000 state jobs. Mexican president ruled out breaking ties with Ecuador following the expulsion of the country's ambassador to Quito due to his recent statements. former trump officials warned about his potential third presidency calling him a threat to democracy president joe biden promised to rebuild the baltimore bridge he stated that he is going to move heaven and earth to rebuild the baltimore bridge Peruvian president was interrogated by prosecutors for 5 hours as authorities investigated whether she illegally received hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, luxury watches and jewelry. And while Slovakians are gearing up for a crucial presidential runoff as the nation decides between a pro-western diplomat and a close ally of Prime Minister Robert Fico here's A report. As Slovakia braces for a historic presidential runoff, the nation is divided between two contenders vying for the largely ceremonial post.
former Foreign Minister Ivan Korpok, a pro-Western diplomat, faces off against Peter Pellegrini, a close ally of Prime Minister Robert Fico. Well, if Korpok wins, I believe it will be good for the country, you know, the balance. We need some um, person in the as a president that counterweights the government, which is, let's say, not full democratic and uh, has some autocratic uh, um, tendencies. And Pellegrini, he's a he's a Fitzox guy, so he will do anything what will Fitz ask him to do, and uh, that will be bad in general for the country, the, for the democracy, and for the future. The election has sparked intense debate among Slovakians with concerns ranging from democratic balance to Slovakia's stance on the war in neighboring Ukraine. I believe it could definitely happen that Slovakia will become another Hungary very soon because there will be, uh, I think the president could be like the last uh, break because if Peter Pellegrini will become president, I think uh, he will like confirm anything that will this uh, government wants so the role of the president in slovakia is largely ceremonial but holds significant symbolic and political weight with responsibilities including appointing the prime minister and vetoing laws meanwhile in neighboring czechia slovakians living abroad are making the journey back home to cast their votes underscoring the significance of this election Hlavne my, mladí ľudia, odišli domov, aby sme volili, lebo my teraz počujeme často, že mladí ľudia ne, nechodia voliť tak, čak, tak často domov. Tak ja som rozhodol proste odísť domov, aby som, aby som reprezentoval uh, môj názor uh, pri voľbách, takže, takže asi, asi. Organized initiatives like Prati Salva election train are facilitating the return of voters, highlighting the engagement and enthusiasm surrounding this crucial democratic process. Agency Report, Republic TV. And well, in Karachi, hundreds predominantly women took to the streets rallying for Al Quds Day carrying banners denouncing Israel and the U.S. They voiced demands for Palestinian freedom, chanting down with Israel. According to Gaza's health ministry, over 33,000 Palestinians have died, with 75,600 wounded in the ongoing conflict. Getting you all the details in this report. Hundreds of people, mostly women, marched in Karachi to mark Al Quds Day. banners and placards inscribed with slogans against Israel and the US, they demanded the freedom of Palestinians and repeatedly chanted down with Israel. The Palestinian death toll has passed 33,000 with another 75,600 people wounded. Because it is a enemy of the people, they should remove the land from this land. They should remove the land from this land. When Israel was made in 75 years ago, it was not fair, it was not fair, it was not fair, it was not fair. And today, it is a threat. It has been killed. If it has been left, it will kill every human being in the world. The ministry doesn't differentiate between civilians and combatants in its tally. The ministry doesn't differentiate between civilians and combatants in its tally. But says women and children make up to two thirds of the dead. The war began on October 7 when Hamas led terrorists stormed into southern Israel, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and taking around 250 people hostage. Agency report Republic TV. And while the humanitarian crisis in Gaza takes center stage as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken addresses the efforts to improve aid distribution in the war-torn territory, let's delve into details of his remarks. In a news conference held in Belgium, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken commended Israel's recent steps to enhance aid distribution into Gaza. We, uh, we welcome the steps that uh, have been announced uh, by Israel, uh, opening uh, Erez as a new crossing point, uh, having um, shipments go directly from the Ashdod port, uh, maximizing the route from Jordan. Uh, 
These are positive developments, but the real test is results. And that's what we're looking to see in the coming days and in the coming weeks. Um, is the aid uh, effectively reaching people who need it uh, throughout Gaza? Uh, are the bottlenecks and other delays at uh, crossings being resolved? Do we have a much better system for deconfliction and coordination so that the humanitarian workers, the folks who are delivering the aid, can do it safely uh, and securely? While acknowledging the potential impact on the newly opened border crossings, Blinken underscored the importance of a robust system for deconfliction and coordination to ensure the safe and efficient delivery of aid to Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, all of these things are critical and that needs to again really be measured uh, by the results. Uh, and some of the, the measures that uh, uh, we're looking to include things like uh, the number of trucks that are actually getting in on a sustained basis uh, and get not just getting in, but then getting around uh, the aid being distributed throughout Gaza, including, critically, uh, northern Gaza. Some of the measurements that we've been deeply concerned by, uh, including uh, the fact that um, almost 100 percent of the population is acutely food insecure, that there are indicators of potential famine. Uh, we'll be looking closely at those to see that, uh, that they're reversed. Blinken stressed on the need for an independent and thorough investigation into the Israeli strikes that resulted in the deaths of seven aid workers, calling for transparency and accountability in the process. It's also critical that we see um, an independent, thorough and fully publicized investigation into the killing of the World Central Kitchen. Um, team uh, who were performing heroic work under the most difficult circumstances in trying to get assistance to people who so desperately need it. Uh, so we're looking to see that investigation, we're looking to see a public accounting, and we're looking to see accountability uh, in, in its wake. Uh, and this goes to a larger challenge that um, we've seen throughout, which is uh, the horrific uh, number of children, women, men, innocent children, women and men, who've been killed through the course of military operations. We've talked about this many times, the unique challenge of dealing with an enemy that embeds itself with the civilian population, that hides behind them, uh, underneath them, in tunnels, in mosques, and schools, apartment buildings, but Israel's obligation, its responsibility to maximize protection for civilians uh, to make that a priority, uh, that too is a critical test. So what we're looking to see in the, in the days and weeks ahead is prioritization. The Secretary of State reiterated on USS commitment to prioritizing the safety of civilians caught in the crossfire. Surging humanitarian assistance, sustaining it, getting it to people who need it, making sure that those who are providing it are safe and secure, and maximizing every effort to protect civilians, those who are caught in, caught in this crossfire from Hamas is making. Uh, we just can't have uh, so many people uh, caught in that crossfire, uh, killed, injured, going forward. International pressure mounts for tangible improvements in Gaza's humanitarian situation. Agency Report, Republic TV. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned of the risk to jobs and businesses posed by overproduction of certain goods in China. She said that during her China visit, she would address the oversupply of Chinese goods in key industries. UN's top human rights body is considering a measure to call for an export ban of weapons to Israel as part of a string of resolutions on the last day of its spring session. The draft resolution calls on countries to cease the sale, transfer and diversion of arms, munitions and other military equipment to Israel.
Europol has identified 821 criminal networks which have more than 25,000 members in the bloc. These networks are penetrating legal businesses across the 27-nation bloc and rely heavily on corruption to develop their activities. Now, according to the agency, 86% of these criminal networks are able to infiltrate the legal economy to hide their activities and launder their criminal profits. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the measures that the Israeli government has announced to expand the flow of aid into Gaza are welcome, but these measures may not be enough to meet the Biden administration's demands for dramatic improvements in humanitarian conditions in the territory. He further said that the opening of more border crossings could surge aid to Palestinians caught in the fighting between Israel and Hamas. In the wake of the last Friday prayers of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, today Israeli police has tightened security in Jerusalem. This comes after eight Palestinian worshippers were detained for allegedly chanting inflammatory slogans at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa compound. The incident marks the first flare-up between Israeli forces and worshippers at the compound during this Ramadan as the Hamas-Israel war rages on in Gaza. Tens of thousands of Yemenis demonstrated in Sana'a to show their solidarity to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. The protesters voiced anti-American and anti-Israeli sentiments through their chants. The demonstration was held in observance of Jerusalem Day, also known as Al-Qaeda's Day. Hundreds of people, mostly women, marched in Karachi, marked Al Quds Day. This carried banners and placards inscribed with slogans against Israel and the US that demanded the freedom of Palestinians and repeatedly chanted, Down with Israel. Hundreds of protesters ga gathered in Rome to rally against a law drafted by the right-wing government in Georgia, Melanie, to make surrogacy a crime. The draft bill would make it illegal in Italy for citizens to engage a surrogate mother in another country and authorize prison term of up to three years. In a recent drone and missile attack, Russia attacked Ukraine's energy sector with renewed intensity and alarming accuracy, signaling to Ukrainian officials that Russia is armed with better intelligence and fresh tactics in its campaign to annihilate the country's power generation capacity. Now, according to official data, at least two thermal power plants were damaged in the attack. Dozens of lights at Sydney Airport were cancelled while train services faced delays after heavy rainfall lashed parts of Australia's southeast region. This has triggered flood warnings and residents have been asked to avoid unnecessary driving trips. A severe weather warning has been issued and residents have been advised to remain alert over the next few days. And while U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned off the risk to jobs and businesses posed by overproduction of certain goods in China, she said that during her China visit, she would address the oversupply of Chinese goods in key industries such as electric vehicles and solar panels. Details in this report. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has called on China to address manufacturing overcapacity. During her five-day visit to China, she said she would raise the issue of industrial overcapacity and unfair Chinese trade practices. We've seen the PRC pursue unfair economic practices, including imposing barriers to access for foreign firms and taking coercive actions against American companies. I strongly believe that this doesn't only hurt these American firms, Ending these unfair practices would benefit China by improving the business climate here. And I intend to raise these issues in meetings this week. Yellen said that it is important for the US and China to have open and direct communication on areas of this agreement. And I guess I'd like to underscore that our concern with overcapacity, this is not anti-China policy. It's an effort for us to 
mitigate the risks from the inevitable global economic dislocation that will result if China doesn't adjust its policies. And it is in the spirit of moving the U.S.-China economic relationship toward in a kind of constructive direction. She also said that China could benefit from a shift in policy. As an economist, I really think that a shift in policy would actually be beneficial for China. It would avoid the resource misallocation that occurs when government subsidies are channeled to firms that wouldn't otherwise be viable. And that's something that would improve China's productivity. And I suppose more broadly, I believe that a structural macroeconomic shift that lifts domestic household consumption would be something that's in China's interest, and it would be something that's good for the global economy. The massive scale of production has driven down costs and ignited price wars for green technologies. This is a boon for consumers and efforts to reduce global dependence on fossil fuels. Agency Report, Republic TV. We've seen the PRC. And on to sports news, according to a report, Rohit Sharma and Hardik Pandya are at constant loggerheads with each other and this has compelled Sharma to reach the end point with Mumbai Indians. Rohit Sharma joined MI in 2011 and has since become the most capped player of the franchise. Surya Kumar Yadav has linked up with Mumbai Indians. This will give a boost to Hardik Pandya's misfiring team at IPL 2024. Surya Kumar has not featured in IPL 2024 so far as he was at BCCI's National Cricket Academy recovering from the ankle surgery he had earlier this year. Sunrisers Hyderabad faced a stern test as they took on reigning champions Chennai Super Kings in match 18. The last match that Hyderabad played on their home ground helped them give a record shattering run chase of 278 to Mumbai Indians. Shashank Singh, 32 year old hard hitting middle order batsman from Chhattisgarh, led Punjab Kings to a resounding victory. Singh's unbeaten 61 of just 29 balls played a pivotal role in the successful chase of a daunting 200 run target set by the Gujarat Titans. Rafael Nadal withdrew from the Monte Carlo Masters where the 22-time Grand Slam winner was expected to make his ATP Tour comeback. The record 11-time Monte Carlo miss winner missed virtually all the 2023 season through injury and has only played at the Brisbane International this season where he felt a hip injury flare up. A short break. On the other side, actor Ranveer Singh is all set to make his acting debut in the South. Reports suggest that he will feature in Rajnikanth's The Liver 171. Amity has been ranked amongst the top 3% universities globally, a testimony to Amity's globally benchmarked quality. May 5, 2023. A film depicting terrorism and the reality of ISIS was met with widespread protest. Slogans raised, sit-in protests staged, screenings blocked. As you know very well that there were so many cases to stop the film everywhere. Uh, Supreme Court has thrown this petition out three times. Uh, Chennai High Court has thrown the petition out today. But tomorrow there are six petitions in... Amity has been ranked amongst the top 3% universities globally. A testimony to Amity's globally benchmarked yeah. quality. एलाइस वाले लोग बार बार जानबूझकर हिंदू धर्म का अपमान करते हैं इनका हर बयान 
बहुत सोचा समझा हुआ होता है Thank you for staying with Republic and well, actor Raj Kumar Rao shared a motion poster of Shrikanth that shows the actor winning the race. Rao is playing the role of an industrialist. The film is based on the visually impaired Shrikanth Bola, an Indian industrialist and founder of Boland Industries. He is the first international blind student in management science at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Here's a report. Rajkumar Rao is gearing up for the release of his upcoming biographical drama, Shrikanth. The actor offers a captivating glimpse into his portrayal of Shrikanth Bulla. An industrious figure who triumphed over adversity to achieve success despite visual impairment. Other than Rajkumar, the biopic drama will feature Jyotika, Alaya F and Sharad Kelkar in significant roles. Shrikant Bulla, an Indian entrepreneur, gained prominence as the founder of Bulland Industries. He is the first international blind student in Management Science Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The motion poster showcased Rao in the role of Shrikant exuding happiness as he races towards his goal. A pioneering venture that offers opportunities for unskilled and differently abled individuals to craft eco-friendly products. Bureau Report, Republic TV. And well, Deepika Padukone, who is expecting her first child with husband Ranveer Singh, is busy with the shoot of Kalki 28988 AD and Singham 3 is reported to have missing be missing the Met Gala 2024, the biggest fashion event of the year, will roll out the red carpets on the 6th of May 2024. Deepika, who has attended the gala three times in the past, will give this year's extravaganza a miss. Deepika Padukone, who is currently in her second trimester of pregnancy, will give this year's Met Gala a miss due to prior work commitments. The actress is also busy with the shoot for Kalki 289880 and Singham 3, which is slated for May. 
For three consecutive years, Deepika Padukone has graced the prestigious Met Gala red carpet. She has captivated audiences with her impeccable style and sartorial choices. Being a global ambassador for India, her presence at global events is what keeps her fans excited. In 2017, Deepika made her Met Gala debut in a sleek slip gown by Tommy Hilfiger, marking the beginning of her journey. The global icon is currently expecting, but there is nothing stopping her as she is busy fulfilling her work commitments. Agency report Republic TV. Stand up for a short commercial break. On the other side, Delhi court to hear Lika Kate accuse Manisha Sodia's bail plea. Today, all eyes on what it will pan out and what will pan out for Manisha Sodia. Vice President Jatib Dhankar slams anti-CAA lobby, says CAA does not exclude India, does not need sermons from other countries. The Congress has released its 48-page poll manifesto. A slew of promises, some repackaged, some that shock, and some which mismatch. The Congress in its manifesto, mostly a rehashed one from 2019, has made regressive promises it calls progressive. From carrying out a pan-India caste census to bringing back personal laws, let us tell you what doesn't add up. The Congress has released its 48-page manifesto, which it calls uh, the Nyai Patra, and in, in the Nyai Patra, it has guaranteed uh, a lot of schemes. You will find that the Congress has set a minimum wage of 400 rupees per day for a daily wage worker, which translates to about 1,44,000 rupees a year. So this is an anomaly because who would apply for an apprenticeship if a daily wage worker is getting paid more than him? Now the judiciary. The Congress promises more women, OBCs and minorities to the High Courts and Supreme Court. The question is, why bring quota over merit system even in judiciary? Let's talk about federalism. Rahul's manifesto says, with consensus, transfer of fields from list 3 to list 2. Is this an attempt to weaken the powers of the central government? The list goes on and has invited a political blowback. जो कांग्रेस की फितरत रही है आदत रही है शरारत रही है उसी के अनुरूप उन्होंने एक बार फिर भ्रम पैदा करने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का मैनिफेस्टो दिया है जिसमें से एक भी चीज ना उन्होंने केंद्र में रहते हुए कभी पूरी की ना राज्य सरकारों में रहते हुए पूरी की इस दिस अ मैनिफेस्टो दैट इंडिया विल एक्सेप्ट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स टाइम नाउ फॉर द नेशन शार्पेस्ट ओपिनियन अ ब्रिटिश न्यूज़पेपर कॉल्ड द गार्डियन सीम्स टू बी स्क्रैम्बलिंग फॉर रेलेवेंस and in the bid to keep its 1821 era newspaper relevant in 2024 they seem to have banked on the accounts of the isi Good morning, viewers. You're watching Live and Breaking with me, Guinea Narula. Let's first take a look at our top headlines. <laughs> Delhi caught to hear Liquor Gate accuse Manish Sisodia's bail plea today. All eyes on the hearing. <laughs> Vice President Dhankar slams anti CA lobby, says CA doesn't exclude. India doesn't need sermons from other countries.
CPI worker killed, another injured in blast during bomb making in Kerala's Kannur district. Blame game ensues. Big setback for BRS ahead of Lok Sabha polls. Four BRS MLAs likely to join Congress today. Shiv Sena the Thakre faction announces candidate for Sangli after high level deliberations. update just coming in that a mob has attempted to vandalize Danish Ali's car as he attended namaz facing Muslim protesters expressing discontent over his candidacy from Amroha. News has just come in that Congress MP Danish was geraud by a mob. There was an attempt to attack him and uh, break Danish Ali's car. The Muslims, the Muslims Gherao or uh, Danish Ali as he went for namaz. This is the news update, the latest update that is just coming in. And apparently there's anger over his candidature from Amroha. This is the reason why the mob attacked his car. We are trying to get in touch with our reporter uh, to get you more details on this. Uh, viewers, you can see the visuals over there. Huge crowd is gathered and the mob tried to attack Danish Ali. This is the Congress MP Danish Ali who is being geared out by a mob and there's an attempt to break Danish Ali's car. This is over his... This, uh, this is ex uh, because the protesters were expressing discontent over his candidacy from Amroha. Right, we are, we are trying to get you more details. Uh, we uh, don't know if there are any injuries so far, but we are trying to uh, connect to our reporter to get you the latest details.